Yep, I'm a great man, all right. You punched a pterodactyl in the face? I thought you didn't even believe in the supernatural. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Level Pixel Level. And uh, this week, I just want to show you my progress with building faces in Grease Pencil. So you can download all these files on Gumroad as I go through uh, some of the steps here. But I want to try a couple different things. Um, I built some really complicated rigs in the past, and I just want to simplify it a bit. So I have this simple shot here. And I want to try something from the Gravity Falls series. It's a really fun show, and I want to see if I could replicate the style using Grease Pencil and Blender. Um, I got pretty close to it, and let me just take you through some of the basic parts of this rig. So I'll go through the eye section first. I built really complicated eye rigs in the past, and I just kind of want to simplify it a little bit. Uh, if I select on it and just go to the layers here, you can see that I've masked a bunch of them off. So just turn all those off and you can see all the parts. So I have this bottom eyelid piece and it's just overlapping the eyelid here. And I just added one control here to give that a curve. I found that's kind of all I needed for this style of show to achieve a lot of the blinks and a lot of the eye expressions. And again, those are just masked on using this mask feature here, which lets me mask a part of the eye uh, with the overlapping geometry or pieces. So I have a top one as well here. And I just weight painted it using an armature and these bones here to get that bendy bone feature. Very similar to how I've done the eyebrow in the past as well. Speaking of the eyebrow, um, I really wanted to try to do something a little bit different for the brow here so that the brow could overlap and actually cover the eye. And that's just with a big chunk of skin that only goes over that piece. So if I isolate it though, you'll see that it's masking just the eye. That way it's not gonna get in the way of the hair or the hat or any of the other pieces. I've done cards like this in the past, except they would always be visible here and they'd be something you'd have to hide all the time. This way it just covers the eye and then you use the eyebrow to essentially push that over the eye. So you can do really fun things with that. This is using the exact same um, function as the eyelids. Um, it's just a mask. So if I go to the eyebrow top skin here, it's just this layer here. And if I turn off the masking function, you can see what that piece actually is. And then I've just skinned it to match the eyebrow here so that they just move as one. Now the eyebrow rigging is exactly the same as my other video where I've shown how to go over how to rig an eyebrow. It's a very similar technique and you can get some really fun features with this. And again, if I bring everything back, you see that that card used to always get in the way. Now with eyebrow top skin, I just mask that over the eye so it's never gonna be in the way. So it's only going to appear over the eye, which is extremely helpful. And I have that on both eyebrows here. So with just those, you can make really, really fun shapes. Okay, in another video, I built a very complicated mouth. And I really wanted to simplify the mouth this time into something a bit easier to work with. I found that in 2D, they usually use basically like five or six shapes all the time. And that's all that they use. And that's what I did here with the mouth. So I have this mouth controller here, and then I have this option to flip through the shapes. Now I did this within the grease pencil object using a modifier using the time offset modifier. And then I just hooked it up to a driver onto this dial to switch through them. Okay, I'd like to go to, into that a bit more detail. So in a new file, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I built that. Now I'm gonna add a new grease pencil object. And I'm gonna make sure that I have my dope sheet open just so I can see what's going on. And I'll make sure I'm at frame one and I'll turn on grease pencil. I'm just gonna go to draw mode and I'm just gonna add a circle. I'll just go to my material tab, make a new material and just make this uh, sort of a blue fill with a black outline. I'll go to frame two and I'm just gonna move this over and I'll go to frame three. I'm gonna go back to draw mode. I'm just gonna draw a square now and hit enter. Notice that the circle disappears. That's because I've added a new frame into my dope sheet here. So it's almost a new part. I'll go to frame four. I'm just gonna draw a triangle. Okay, so now on my grease pencil, I have these four frames. Now if I add a time offset modifier, so if I go to add grease pencil, 
uh, time offset, what I can do is target which frame I want visible. So I'm going to go to frame 20. Now that's still played sort of, still went through. What you want to do is fixed frame. So now I can choose if I want it to be frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, or frame 4. I can now target which frame I want to be visible while I'm working. So it creates almost like a sub animation track. Okay, so now that I have that, let's look at another example. So I have this mouth here, and on frame one I have this shape, on frame two I drew this shape, frame three, frame four, frame five, frame six, frame seven, frame eight, frame nine, frame 10. So I have 10 different frames here, different mouth shapes. Um, I'm just gonna go to frame 20, with the mouth selected, I'll go to modifiers. I'm gonna add a time offset, and I'm just gonna make it a fixed frame. Now with this frame option here, I can dial through all the different mouth shapes. I just basically turn that animation into a dial. Now if I click on this armature here and go to pose mode, if I come down to the bone tab, we can add a driver. So add custom property, I'll just call this mouth shapes. I'll make the property value 1 by default, I don't need it to be 1.0, and I'll make the minimum value 1 with the max being 20. And I'll click OK. I'm just going to right-click on this and copy this data path because I'm going to use it later. OK, I'm going to come back to the mouth. I'm going to right-click on frame, and I'm going to add a driver. I'm just going to make this var, and I'm going to make it a single property. The property is going to be that armature there, and the path, I'm just going to do Control-V or Command-V on a Mac to paste, and it pastes that property value that I copied. That's it. Now when I click on this rig here, this bone, and I go to Properties, I can change the mouth shape and actually key this over time. So this is a really great way to make a mouth. Now if you need more shapes, you're kind of out of luck because you can't really edit these. So even if you had to add more shapes, you could just come to frame 11 and just keep adding more and more shapes as you need them in your production. So this is a little bit of a different setup than the other mouth rig that I've shown. Uh, and it's a little bit different setup than the uh, rig I did for that other character that I built from the Hilda show. Um, maybe there's a version of this where you can actually even mix these styles, where you could have a rigged version and a dialed version as well and start to combine them together using your modifiers. That way you could do things like move the teeth and the tongue without having to go into the grease pencil area. Anyway, I'm going to keep messing with this and I just want to show you guys one last thing that I tried to build. Um, this is sort of a grease pencil going across 3D shapes. This kept causing issues where the actual grease pencil, I could not get it to follow the curvature of a 3D object. Now I could get the outline to follow, but you can see that the fill always goes through. I tried many different things to fix this, and I did not find a nice solution to this problem. Um, it's something I'm going to keep looking at and keep playing with. I was close, but it's not ready for uh, prime time yet. It's not ready for production, and I don't think it's a useful system yet. It's something I need to keep playing with. Um, this might even be something that Grease Pencil can't really do and it might be better to use geometry for this. But feel free to check out this rig, check out this character, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if there's another shot or show you want me to try in Blender to prove that it can hit the style. And then let me know if you have any questions about this rig in the comments below. A huge thank you to my patrons and everyone on Patreon for supporting me. Uh, it means the world to me, it means I can keep making these videos and keep pushing out content like this where I keep pushing the bounds of Grease Pencil and Blender. Talk to you next time, bye bye.